posted a video a while back on how to make a capacitated battery charger, but I didn't really explain what it can do. So I have one put together here, plugged into a watt meter on the wall, and I just have it boxed up in my uh, the case my phone came in. I have the bridge rectifier on the outside so it can stay cool. So inside, I just have the run capacitor like in the previous video to limit it to one amp charging. And then I have an uh, electrolytic capacitor on the DC output of the bridge rectifier to uh, limit any spikes from turning the switch on and off. So I won't fry any electronics. I forgot to mention, and I don't know if you can see it down there, but there is a one mega ohm resistor across this capacitor so that you won't get electrocuted after you turn it off by accident. I just hooked a voltmeter up to the capacitor and then I put a 3 microfarad run capacitor onto the charger to limit it to 100 milliamps because I'm going to be driving some LEDs for this demonstration. As you can see the wall voltage is 122 volts. We're going to leave this on the watt setting for the rest of this experiment. Uh, when I turn the circuit on, this capacitor, since it's not under load on the output, will read higher than the mains voltage. So you can see it's about 20 volts over the mains voltage due to the RMS. So since I have this uh, 1 mega ohm resistor over this capacitor, when I turn the circuit off, it won't stay at 140 volts. It'll drain back down to zero for safety reasons. Now that the capacitor voltage is down to zero, I've connected a 10 amp ammeter across the output of the battery charger. So now when I turn it on, the voltage required to go across the ammeter is zero. So the voltage did not change on the charger. And we're getting 110 milliamps. I've just hooked up the output leads from the charger across a uh, 20 watt white LED and uh, it's in series with the ammeter. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the circuit on. We're going to watch the voltage in the light. So the light comes on. The charger produces 13.4 volts because that is all that's needed to get the 100 milliamps across the LED. connected this white LED in series with this white LED. Uh, this is a 6500K white and this is 3500K white so they will be different colors. So let's see. 27 volts 100 milliamps. Both are lit. I have here a 100 watt 6500K uh, LED white. I'll now do that. 26 volts by itself, 100 milliamps is lit. Now I'm going to wire all three of them in series. All three are now wired in series. Uh, so this one was 26 volts, and those two together were 26 ish volts, so we would expect around 52 volts when you add them together. So I'm going to turn it on. It's about 52 volts. It's less than 100 milliamps uh, for whatever reason. But all three are lit. So you can see you can combine LEDs of incompatible operating voltages. So these are both 13 and this one is 26 up to 36 volts. So normally you wouldn't be able to wire these in the same circuit with this one. You can see I haven't shown it yet, but it's been doing it every time. When I turn it off, the capacitor takes time to drain, so you see they stay lit for just a few seconds. So since these are 20 watt LEDs and a 100 watt LED, they can handle more than 100 milliamps. So I went ahead and rewired it, put the uh, 1 amp back in, and we'll go ahead and turn it on now. So as you can see, they're significantly brighter. The voltage is higher, 59 volts and they're putting in 620 milliamps. It's not quite one amp, but you get the idea. And they're all lit.
and you can see they have that residual energy in the capacitor that are being drained. 100 watt LED back up at 1 amp. You can see it's 28 volts now instead of 26 and it's at 810 milliamps. I'm going to go ahead and add another amp to the circuit. So as you can see I've just added another 25 microfarad capacitor in parallel to this one to increase the capacitance to 50 microfarads. That should double the amperage. I could have also just used one 60 microfarad capacitor and got the same results. So now when I turn it on, we get 30 volts at 1.64 amps and it's much brighter. So I'm going to take a second and show you the power consumption from the watt meter on the wall running at 2 amps on the charge, uh, 30 volts, 1.65 amps. Multiply those together, that comes out to around 50. And we're pulling 53 watts from the wall. Now reduced it back down to 1 amp. So 28 volts times 810 milliamps. 25 watts. I've just shorted out the charger leads, still at 1 amp, turn the circuit on, we're getting 100 milliamps, no voltage, we're using 4 watts. I've now disconnected the leads, they're open circuit, I turn the charger on, we get 166 RMS voltage on the capacitor now instead of 144 with the 100 uh, milliamp capacitor. We have zero amperage flowing. We're using 2.8 watts. Connected the 100 watt LED, running it at 1 amp at 28 volts. So it's 25 watts. But since this circuit uses this run capacitor, and it is attached to the mains voltage the actual power moving through the line is 121 VA but only 25 watts are being consumed so uh, if you make a larger version of this for charging electric cars or golf carts or whatever else be sure to size your wire for the VA and not the wattage since the circuit automatically varies its voltage, it can be useful for other things such as electrolysis. So I've just turned it on. I have a weak electrolytic solution in there, and you can see it is generating hydrogen gas at 10 volts and 1 amp. So you can string many cells in series and use the same power supply for testing individuals or multiples and it'll just adjust its voltage accordingly to get the amperage across the water. I've just wired one of the 20 watt white LEDs in series with this electrolytic cell. We turn it on and you can see 24 volts at 840 milliamps. The light is on and it is generating hydrogen gas. So you can see regardless of the voltage each individual component requires it will generate the voltage needed to get one amp across with the 25 microfarad capacitor. So you can string varying loads together. So red, blue, and white LEDs all take different voltages to operate. But you can wire them in series with this circuit and they will all operate within their parameters. The same principles that allowed all this to work also apply to batteries. So you can uh, charge any combination of rechargeable batteries with this. Uh, different chemistries, it'll uh, compensate for all of them. You just have to be careful you don't overcharge and start generating hydrogen gas like in the electrolytic cell because it will always raise the voltage to get the amperage across. So if the battery is fully charged and not taking any more amperage, the charger will increase the voltage to get the charge across the battery and electrolyze the uh, 
electrolyte in the battery. So if you wanted a charger that charged at say one amp trickle charge for your RV you could hook this up. If you remove the smoothing capacitor it'll emit a square wave and theoretically desulfate the batteries. Um, if you had two golf carts you could make a larger charger. If the golf carts are 36 and 36 volt you can wire them in series to charge. It'll charge them. If you have a 48 volt golf cart and a 36 volt you can wire those in series and it will charge both of them. Uh, if you have a boat and you have multiple batteries you can charge them in parallel or you can since the charger is limited by amperage uh, if you had four boat batteries in parallel, 12 volt batteries, you would only get 250 milliamps per battery charging. But if you take them out of the boat and wire them in series, plus to minus, you would get one amp through all of them and charge them four times faster. So it has many applications. The thing I have left to say about this circuit is if it's open circuit on the charging side, it will be above mains voltage and could electrocute you. So make sure it's always securely connected to whatever you're operating or short it out.